Well, it was a very chilly day in Ontario today. Um, we did our videos. Pretty cool look at um, who we thought were our top picks thus far in 2024. Very difficult video to make. And I'm sure we're going to have a lot of people ask, why not this horse, why not this horse? I think I did my best to, to explain that, as you did too. But um, a fun video to make. Kind of useless. Yeah, very. Very useless, but fun nonetheless to make. Now, when it comes to this week, um, now fresh in my memory, we're obviously the horses that train today, uh, both three-year-olds and two-year-olds, I'll talk about them in a minute. But obviously, uh, time is on my side, starting to really pick up some steam as he heads into his stake season, you know. Uh, so we trained him down, felt like an okay horse, had some ability, had, he had his days where he looked good, but you, as you said in the other video, you have to be so fast to be an effective horse, so fast to be an effective horse. So how do you get there? You have to have talent, you have to have ability, you have to have mental and physical maturity and intelligence and want, you have to be the total package to be in that total package class. And it's so hard because the difference between a top of the, top of the food chain horse in the middle of the road horse is not that much at all. And uh, I didn't know what would happen. Time is on my side. Felt a little soft on Tuesday when I qualified him. But he'd been off six weeks, seven weeks. And then last year, he he won a race in 54 or something. But he looked okay. Yeah. Right? We followed, castrated him. Followed speed. And yeah. It's exactly. He jumped on horses he was supposed to beat. Castrated him, turned him out, brought him back. He was okay. Now, I'll tell everybody this. So everybody, a couple of people asked me, and maybe you don't even know this. Do you know what the turning point was in Time is on My Side? What do you mean? This year? Yeah. When he turned the corner, was there anything that I can put my finger on that would make me believe that is that is what helped him get over the hump? Because Did if you were... Did he off from last year? Nope. When, when, you, when we trained him down, he would always roll up alongside and kind of hang a bit, right? Yeah. He wouldn't pace he'd away from He would always be on the line. He was always on the line. You're right. And that plays exactly, exactly what I'm going to talk about. So, uh, Time's on my side, always wore flip-flops. He's got kind of, and I think this is indicative of the captain, of the captain crunches. And this is important. Uh, a little more heel than you'd like to see in a shelly foot. Mm -hmm. His feet, their feet, I don't say there because we only had one. His feet bothered him quite a bit. And we would block them. We would work on them. We'd flip-flops on them. But when you moved him, he'd scream past them and they'd just kind of hang out a little bit. Right? And... Why? Some horses do that. He was green, whatever. And we got him over to the meadows, and I knew that the flip flops, they didn't get a hold of the meadows real good with flip flops. So we put, you remember what we put on him? Do you know what he wears even to this day? A plate? Nope. He wears a mushroom bar. Time is on my side, so we, this is what, and, and I guess we started putting it on him when we got, think of Galaxies also. Mm -hmm. Think of Galaxies, wore flip flops, wore different shoes. I think she just had full swedges for Ronnie, but at a gear, at a gear, feet bothered her put mushroom shoes on her and we tra she trained her faster than she's ever gone officially we trained her 49 a piece at Northfield she was amazing and then she went out winning 50 and 3 50 and 1 50 and 1 and the only change we made were those shoes now the mushroom bars uh, I've explained this to people before. so there's a horse's foot you have a shoe just a normal full swedge whatever trotting shoe it doesn't matter they're all just encompassing the outside of the foot now the bars will be at the back or you can have an egg bar that comes out that juts out a little bit from the back of the foot. The problem with the egg bar is it's easy to grab it. So pacers, sometimes you can wear them, sometimes you can't. Now, a mushroom bar is half a shoe. So it goes the half of the foot to about right to the half point, a bar across, and then you have these two bars that come down. Well, they're usually welded together. So it's the bar part of the shoe. The back heels of the shoe are left open all the time. And my thinking was that his feet were just contracted a little bit and his walls were sore. And if we could just take the pressure off those walls, maybe he'd be a better horse. And all of this is trial and error. It works on some horses. It doesn't work on others. It worked on, think of Galaxy for sure. It works on Stay Close. He's worn them for two years. He's worn aluminum plates, a trotter. Aluminum uh, mushroom bars. But time is on my side, whereas these bars. First time we raced him, he was a winner. Felt good. I didn't really think of the bar shoe at the time, but he felt good. I was happy that he could, he didn't have to wear the flip-flops at the Meadows because on a warmer day, they can't get a hold of the track well at the Meadows with flip-flops on. At least I've found that with some horses. Went out and won his next start. Felt pretty good. Now I'm starting to think, Jesus, Colt feels good. Now at this point, we're still in... Uh, January? We're in January, but we're in exit mode. How do we how do we possibly get the money out of this Colt that we put into him? We have a fortune into him. 
maybe we race them. And the reason we raced them in January, not often you see people start three-year-olds in January. Yeah. The reason we raced them in January to race them through the non-winners classes into the the two series is the one that he's in today and the one that just finished in the meadows and then if we get a big bulk of money out at that point we can reassess them and say okay do we sell them and try and mitigate our losses now or do we continue and look to the stake season and that allowed us to do that it's not often that you take that route because it's easier said than done you can't just start them up put them away start them back up put them away you can't do that so you know he started up in january he's two for two but his third win jogs 54 27 and 2 on the end of it with the earplugs in and looked amazing at that point now we got to pump our brakes all right we've already started down this track we've already started the train up what can we do to try it in to try and freshen him up for the rest of the year we gave him four weeks off brought him back he was supposed to race last week the class didn't go everything worked perfect if the race went last week yeah. because Pennsylvania I don't know if you knew this but Pennsylvania had stretched their qualifying times 90 days because the Poconos in Philadelphia were down yeah. but once the Poconos in Philadelphia started up they retracted them back to 45 or 60 days now time is on my side because he didn't race last week now has to qualify so he qualified him on Tuesday went around 58 four days out that's lots but I didn't know how he'd be. He was over on the shaft a little bit. Maybe need a little bit of work. Maybe not. I didn't know what he'd do. Hasn't done his best work on the front. He sure looked good today. 53-1. and one, What, 28-1 and one on the end of it? And looked like he was driving away. Again, never the horse to race on the front end and drive away from competition. No. Now, he is a long way from the sire stakes. A long way from the sire stakes. But a good start. 53-1. and one, He looked fantastic today another horse that is also undefeated this year do you know who it is another very good looking colt that is also undefeated mm -hmm. undefeated as of right now I think you're stumped undefeated what do you mean undefeated as of right now in 2024 three it's three for three and has never been beat and about to start into the first part of his stake season in three weeks I know three. Which one? Fancy. Fancy is, yeah. Two for two. This horse is three for three. Hmm. An easy winner last week. Four to five morning line this week. Not the other colt. Who? The dance whatever. Who? Dance who? Oh, Born to dance? dance? No, he was beat. He was second last week. Oh, he was? Oh, whoops. Mounds for all. Oh, yeah. Mounds for All is, this is Tactical Mounds' brother. And although Tactical Mounds was good at two, she wasn't a crushing winner in stake races. She made very little money. And in fact, coming back at three, we were happily surprised that she qualified so good. Mm -hmm. 55 and four, I think, 56. I didn't see her much because you guys had her in Ohio. That's right. And, but still was not Tactical Mounds. She was just a nice filly. In fact, we were debating what to do with her. Can she really go to New Jersey and race? Well, she answered that with $300,000 straight away earned in 2023 and nobody talked about her brother because her brother was a bit of a mutt right making breaks and not wanting to do his work had a bad attitude just lazy just a lazy cult of two that can be yeah is that a and thing? then but is he that did a thing eh, maybe i don't know i haven't had enough of them but he did trot in 55 and four as a two-year-old 27 and three on the end of it, but following speed yeah never really did anything where like hey who was that horse right no no he never did that Come out this year, qualified, won by like eight or nine in the qualifier. One is first start. One is second start, look great. And then the other night makes a break, coming first over. I had to move the bike over. He really didn't have a lot of reason to make a break, but he did. He got jostled, made a break, but came right up trotting, recovered, ended up second over, and just attacked on the end of it. Drove away, a winner in 58. If I don't make a break, he wins in 56 for sure. 56 and a piece. And looked amazing. Four to five again. We're going to finish off the Iron Maiden series. He's going to miss the first leg of the series in uh, Hoosier. But we'll catch up in the second leg and hopefully the final. But he has looked amazing this year. We don't talk about him enough. But you got to give credit where credit is due. He looked very, very good the other night. So two Colts that are undefeated. Now we have a bunch of horses we want to talk about that are coming up. How good did Arson look in the qualifier? Mm -hmm. I showed you. He looked amazing. He's going to he's going to race uh, next Saturday. Now winners of five, but not more than eight. He does have a race. That race feeds right into the May the 4th race the week after. So, uh, Arson, 
is at Tim's right now. He's going to race next Saturday. He's going to race again. We'll probably train him Tuesday when I'm there. He's going to race again the following week. Now, where do we race him? I have people saying, oh, I can't wait for the Adios. Easy now. A nice colt, but he's got a ways to go yet. I don't even know if where we're going to start him, right? right? We know what he is in Kentucky. We kind of have an idea what he might be. But he didn't win the Kentucky final. He won the C division final. Right. He did good things, but he wasn't. He's There's not. There's also going to be a whole slew of horses yeah. that didn't race it to show up. 50 51 is what's waiting on the menu for him in his first Cyrus Day. Could we race him in that division? It, depending on how he does in the overnight, do we just feed him right into the Cyrus Stakes? I have kind of an inclination. I might just stuff him in the Stallion Series if I want to. Managing that colt was, uh, you know, Eric did a great job taking care of him. Managing him played a big role of him doing as well as he did last year. Racing him in that C rather than looking for the B or the A all summer played a major role in him becoming Arson. And I think we need to understand that and remember that. Mm -hmm. So depending on how he does next week, we'll define whether he'll start in the Sire Stake or the Stallion. But I still have my eyes on Kentucky with this guy. Going to have a lot of fun with Arson this year. He was awesome in his quality. Oh, and I'm sure you have the jug on your mind too. Sure. We get the jug and we have the adios on our mind for sure. But he has to get there. Yeah. So how do we get him there? What's the most effective way to get him there? And that's what we're trying to come up with right now. Uh, memory and imagination. Qualified good. I watched his qualifier. 58, 28, and 3. Felt, looked like he needed another race. So we're going to train him up. Uh, he'll probably train in two minutes on Tuesday. He will also race in the numbers of two but not more than four race Saturday at the Meadows. You're coming to the Meadows on Saturday, aren't you? I can I think you should. It's going to be a lot of fun that day. Are, Time is on my side. Races that day again. I'm just wondering what. You know, I'm figure, tempted just to we'll put Chris, Chris Lemmes back on him too. I thought he raced well with him, and I think he's going to have a great year. When it comes to me, I know he can go out and probably win, but am I needed? Right. I want to see Arson with my own eyes. I want to know what he is heading in next week. Memory and imagination, different kind of horse. Mm -hmm. Time is on my side. Look great today. So, so happy for my partners on him. Happy for Chris. Happy for Tim. You know, Tim is sitting on. Tim doesn't know this yet. But between she sits at the bar, green glitter. Um, now, I already said that, that you're probably not going to see Captain Incredible show up there. But we do have other horses that look very good, too. The Colts, Arrowhead Hanover looks great, right? Manhattan Money looks great. Do we, have the, do we have a pacing fill? Oh, yeah, we just have the Country. one that's already He's there. Already there. Loves. So Tim may have not have taken a full understanding and taken stock of what is available to him for Pennsylvania this year. But I can tell you one thing. He's got some power waiting for him in 2024 throughout the season. Arson is there right now, and although we do have Arson potentially slated to go to Kentucky, when he's at the Adios, he'll be in Tim's barn if we race him in the Adios if he gets there. So, memory and imagination. Very. I think we also have to look at if everyone's like Kentucky, maybe he should stay. And that's a good Here, point. Maybe I think, he should stay there. Well, Arson, I, I think there's there's an argument for that. But Arson is going to have two stakes. Whether they be Stallion or Sire stakes, he's going to have two stakes under his belt. Before, before. you have to go to... Exactly. Yeah. So, um, we have Time is on my side. We have Arson. Uh, both those are memory and imagination. I, I, I love how he trained back. I thought he was a tiny bit flat the other day. There's another guy that wears flip-flops. Tiny bit flat the other day in 58. But again, was he ready to go more? I don't know. We'll probably train him in two minutes on Tuesday and come back on Saturday. So, he'll be very, very tight for his Saturday race. I want to see what he can do. He is slated to go to the Bunker Hill, and there's no guarantees. He may not go there, but that is where he's slated to go first for us. Um, uh, Mel Gibswan, another horse. It was He's not even remotely close to the Mel Gibswan of 2023 yet, but there's nothing stopping him from getting no. there. I don't think he's as big or bulky as he was last year, so I want to see him bulk up a little bit. His blood work come back okay. We have been treating him. Uh, with doxycycline for Lyme disease because it, it may be an option and we did do the test. I haven't heard back from Mike yet. But again, I want to see what Mel Gibson can do. If this is Mel Gibson, fine. Then we'll find a spot for Mel Gibson. We're not going to enter him and race him according to how we believe he should be in 2024. He's literally a $10,000 yearling. Hey, I forgot about that. Yeah. You're right. You know, he made 91002 yeah. He already has won his three-year-old start. Did he look impressive? No. In fact, yeah, a wonderful trivia question will be who was one horse that raced in the Peter Houghton at two, made $91,000 in Indiana, and was almost not the favorite in a, in a maiden at Northfield, his first yeah. start back in 2024? You know, and almost got beat. Yeah. But he did fight back to win. And there was no slouch. The horse that was second made 40 as a two-year-old, too. Had some talent. 
and Mel Gibbs won. He had to dig down a little bit to get the job done. So that his training did come back. Yeah. But I'd like to see a little more from Mel. He was mildly impressive. A horse that was uh, mildly unimpressive was Gypsy Hill. And I told everybody, the Gypsy Hill breaks that we're seeing, these are all mental mistakes. That's exactly what they are. I watched him the other day. This is not mechanical. This is not physical. Now, we will change, we will change his gear to accommodate him. And we will help him get through this. But make no mistake, I am absolutely 100% positive that these breaks are born from his mind. And I can't really blame him. Last year, you guys don't know this, but he had interfered and interfered. And he was hitting that hind shin. It would blow up. We'd have to ice it and ice it and ice it and ice it and get it down just to go and race him and have it blow up again. And we were trying to slightly tinker with the shoes to get him right, but nothing seemed to work. He just seemed like he was at that top of that shin into his jack area, and it was painful. So for him to you know bite down, as I said, as they say in fighting, bite down on that mouth guard and go to work meant a lot. Now, as he comes back this year, touches up in there once in a while, that light bulb goes off. That hurts. That hurt last year. I don't really know if I want to push through this year. So we're going to help him get through that, and that's going to come from rinse and repeat. Work and work and work. I worked him hard on Friday. Uh, on Thursday, Friday. Thursday, I worked him hard. Uh, he jogged on Friday, and Jason was going to train him a slow mile tomorrow. He is going to qualify at the Meadows on Tuesday again, but I think he'll be much better this week. We took all that gear off the inside of him that was stopping him from running in and just put a little bit on him, and we're going to let him run in. We're going to help him get through that turn. Rather than forcing him into the turn and forcing him through it, we did make a slight shoeing adjustment. We did make a slight equipment adjustment, and I think you're going to see the gypsy, at least the shadow of the gypsy we've been waiting for, show up very strong and appears eager to do his work. We just got to help him. This is all mental. Um, and a horse that just showed up, uh, widespread panic. Kind of a... Uh, weird way to go about it but he had made some breaks in Ontario we're getting close to when he's supposed to be racing I said no no he's going to Indiana anyway get him over here so I can have a look under the hood myself I understand when I hear Dominic try to explain what he's doing wrong I can't I can't it's not articulated the way I need to see it right yeah and I can't I haven't seen it so I want to I want to get a look under the hood I had every intention just going a slow mile with him on Friday but then I said geez I need to put him in the bike because I need to what he's doing see what he's doing in the race bike Right? I need to see where what he's doing wrong. We put the equipment on him. We didn't even have an equipment card. We just hung him up the same way we had him hung up last year. And my intention was go out, score him down. After I get him through the first turn, I'm going to have a pretty good idea of what he's doing wrong. And then I'll be able to fix it. Hopefully fix it. There wasn't anything wrong. I went a mile two one with him in the race bike and he was very good that so was is a, he going to qualify on yeah. he's going to qualify on Tuesday and that's a heavy lifting for him hey by the way I need you to train really really hard on Friday and then we're going to come back uh, under under 96 hours later and go another race mile that's a lot to ask but they've been putting a lot of work into him he seemed to recover well after the after the training mile so I suspect he'll come in he'll be coming in hot but he'll be coming in sharp and in shape for his Tuesday qualifier and then after that we can do whatever we want with him now, uh, this is a perfect opportunity. I was so happy to see Lover's Play qualify today, too. I, you know how much I love this filly. And I've said it openly and out loud. I believe we're going to race her through 2024, and if we want to, we're going to breed her in 2025. That's how much I love this filly. And I think that she is going to. we're going to have some fun with her, but it hasn't been very much fun so far. Made a break in Kentucky. And I told everybody how those paths can be changed, but just by a, a stupid mistake... I worked hard to get green tea around the first week. Now, I made a break in the second week. I'm sure he'll be fine this week. But lovers play. I went out of there a little too hard with her, came into the turn a little too hot, and she made a break. Because of that break, she made a break. She had to qualify. She qualified, made a break off a qualifier. Now you're in a bad spot. I just needed to get that flat line on her, and I didn't. And it was my mistake. And because of that, everything unraveled for her in Kentucky. So I, I opted to send her back to Pennsylvania, race her today, try and get a flat line on her. If she didn't, heaven forbid, we may have to qualify her on Tuesday also. Uh, and Mike Wilder did a great job to get her around. She gets up with the ground sweet. Like I said to one of my partners, Alan, the other day, this isn't a breaker. This is not a filly that I'm ever... The reason I left with her that day in Kentucky, because I was positive it wasn't going to be a problem. Yeah. And it was. And that was on me. I threw caution to the wind where it wasn't necessary made a break, and unraveled an entire start to her season. So now we had to fix it. Mike Wilder uh, cleaned that stall up today and fixed her, get her, got her around, 
uh, we'll probably either try to race her next Saturday again in the same class. I'd be happy to race her in. Or she may have to race in Northfield. But either way, my intention is to get her back to Kentucky at some point. But we need to be certain that everything is fine as we head back down there next time. So again, uh, finishing seventh is not the way you want to fix your problems. But she's got a flat line clean. And we'll race her next week. Now... I did want to touch on a few things. A lot of people, uh, and this was spurred on by, actually, hold that for, thought for one minute. Ready for landing train, great today. I had talked about him in another video, I believe, uh, this morning's video about what took place and, and how it how it came about. Uh, the mile he went today in 2-1 at first line was an incredible mile. It was freezing cold. It was windy as a bugger out. It was snowing off and on. And not a fast track. Had to be mile 57, 58 at Mohawk for sure. He was good today, but what I liked most about him, he was quiet. He understood his job. He relented. And before, you saw him on the gate the other night, a wild lunatic of a horse. Looked like the, literally, like the, you know, like the Calgary Stampede before they said go. And that isn't how this horse should act. I've seen him do it before. Was I shocked? No. But I was disappointed a little bit. And, and I wanted him. I really thought that, I really thought today's training was one going to leave me as tired as him. But it's like he knew. He knew I wasn't playing around when I came there today and went out and never acted up at all. It was two fingers. So I come in and I'd ask James, please go with this horse on Thursday. Not that Jody did anything wrong. That was not Jody's fault. No. Not Jody's fault in the least. But please, you know what I just did. You know how I am. You know how the horse is. Just please go with this horse on Thursday. Now, if he absolutely can't, he can't. But I hope James goes with him on Thursday or Friday whenever he races because... I do believe there's a good horse in there. I've doubled down now. I've said this before about Brace, but I've also said it about other horses too. And we have, and we will, and I continue to double down on this horse. I think there's a good horse in there. And I can tell you this much. Today's training mile, best he's ever looked in his life, 1,000% was today. Now, uh, we had sold Sedona Hill the other day, and I took a little flack from one of our newer partners, Paula. And she made some good points, but not understanding that I believed that those avenues were closing in, those walls were closing in, and I don't like that feeling. No. I don't like the feeling that knowing if this horse can't do right here, right now in this class, there's nothing for her. Well, we've learned by holding on to horses. In yes, the past. not always, but sometimes we have learned, right? And and when you when you look at the avenues, when I say, okay, if she can't do here, where do we race her? And there's not a lot there. Mm -hmm. It's time to maybe look around to see if she wants to be sold. Now, I wasn't actively. No, searching to I sell her. I was surprised when you said that. Yeah, I ha I was contacted by somebody who said, is Sedona Hill for sale? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, depending on what you're offering, yes. We negotiated a price that I thought was more than fair for that filly. And I did have one person that was disappointed that we sold the filly. Now, I have a, a three horses. Three horses, well, six horses, three situations. That, and I don't know. I keep telling everybody you don't know. I've had people contact me and say, Anthony, how's Jayport Beach Boy? And I told Gary, Gary Law, one of our clients, Gary, I've had no complaints from Dominic. He thinks the horse is good. He was on the left line qualifying. Now, I got there today, and James said he didn't like him. He didn't like the way he qualified. Yeah, we'll get him off the line. He'll be all right. But I don't think he's a Mohawk horse. And that was James's blunt view of Jay. And I appreciate that. It was not the same view I got from Dominic. Now, usually Johnny is the voice of reason. Right? He'll tell you bluntly also what he thinks. But he had a more... James has not gone with J-Port Beach Boy very much. Right? And Johnny and Dominic have. So I got on one hand Dominic saying that he's a better horse than that. And on the other hand I got James saying, I'm just telling you the horse I went with the other day is not a Mohawk horse. As he is. Right. Okay. What's in between? How do we get from there to there? Or there to there? And what happened in between? Now Johnny was the one that said, no, he's a better horse than that. But... Stop short of saying he's a Mohawk horse also. And I felt bad because I just finished telling people, geez, you know, he seems like a nice horse. He should be okay. He's bred well. This is Century Pharaoh's brother. He's bred well. Really nice horse. Um, what's stopping him? Nothing. Nothing's stopping the horse from being a good horse. But he has to get there. Just because I tell you he's okay doesn't mean that he actually is. What if James is right? He's not a Mohawk horse and he's going to be some sort of a claimer. Okay. I guess that's the way it is. But again, all the lies and all the concerns and all the stuff in between get found out in the wash, right? And it's not that I, I... I feel bad that I vouched for a horse that I wasn't really certain about. 
And I guess I didn't vouch for him. I told everybody, I don't know. I'm just going, Dominic says he's an okay horse. And I'm not saying Dominic's wrong. He might go out next week and qualify in 56, which he should. If I'm not mistaken, he pays 55 once or twice to two-year-old. But until you get them into a racing situation, you don't know. I was disappointed with Jay Port's qualifier. And I think James was too. I think everybody was. What is he going to do next? Show me next week. So no more left line. And I want him on the left line next week. And I want to know what he can do next week when he rolls in behind the gate. If he's not a Mohawk horse, I can race him in the Maiden Claimer at Northfield Park. I can race him at the Meadows. We can race him at London, Flamborough. We have options. But my preferred route would be a stake horse in 2024. And if he's not, he's likely not going to stay. And he's not the only one. We have horses here to talk about, right? Victory Blue Chip and Vaquero Blue Chip. As a two-year-old, Vaquero Blue Chip would kill him. Absolutely murder him. Mm-hmm. We get to the three-year-old season. I train Vaquero Blue Chip here. Now, Harry tells me he likes him. James actually says he likes him. But I haven't sat behind him in all of 2024. You said Vic- Victory. Oh, I said I didn't sit behind either of them. Yeah. But going into it. But Victory, Harry and James liked better than Vaquero. Mm-hmm. I found that hard to believe because Vaquero was a much better horse as a two-year-old. I trained Vaquero, 2-3, last half and 1-1 one, one at first line. Feels good. Race him his first start. They went a little quick up front. He got a little soft and flattened out. All right. No, he bled a little bit. Let's put him on Lazex. Let his hobbles out a little bit. I'm sure he'll be fine. I was expecting a decent mile yesterday. And what I got was a horror trip. Mm-hmm. I mean, Chris did nothing wrong. He got away last, finished last, and looked terrible. He looked like a horse that did not belong in that class in any way, shape, or form. He looked like a horse that came out of a claimer into a condition race and had no point, no, no business being in there. Not only did he have business being in there, but he probably should have been pretty close. And that's not Tim's fault. That's not Chris's fault. And I suspect it's not Vaccaro's fault. Now, he didn't bleed yesterday. He scoped clean. We are going to take his blood and figure out what is going on with him. But the other side of that coin was Victory Blue Chip. Harry and James are right. Now, I don't know which one's a better one. Obviously, Victory got a, a giant head start the other night. 56 and 1, 28 and 3, and the end of it finished fourth. Now, he wasn't good enough for James to drive. I can't complain. James won the race. But the horse looked infinitely better than he did last year. Mm-hmm. Took the hobbles off him. Now, he was a big, strong colt that was a little goofy. Now, for, for my partners out there that remember this, we put this colt on on gate last year, or yeah, preferred. We didn't get a bid. I bought him back. No, I bought him back at 14 because I wanted 20. I wanted 20 for him. I thought that's what he was worth. Got nowhere near 20 for him. Bought him back. Brought him home and said, well, I guess we'll just bite the bullet, train him back. And if he's a condition claimer, he's a condition claimer. He's not. Nice colt. 56 and 1, 28 and a piece in the end of it. Looked very good doing his work. The other side of that coin is a colt that was infinitely better than him last year and looked really bad yesterday. And I don't know. If you would ask me two weeks, oh, Harry, don't be so crazy. You're telling me the Victory Blue Chip's going to beat up in Vaquero. Absolutely not. Where is Vaquero Blue Chip? Where'd he go to? I suspect somewhere in his blood we will figure that out. And we'll get him squared away. George of the Jungle. Trained down good. Looks good. Everything's good. 2-4. Now, James said, I could have went lots more. Okay, could you? I appreciate it if you would next time. I would really like that. It's very difficult to see our horse qualifying 2-4 at Mohawk and be ecstatic about that. Actually, the opposite. Disappointed. So, James being James, it's hard to, to read into that. Next week, on Monday, not next week, in 48 hours, I expect him to trot in 2-1 or 2-2 and look good doing it. Please, I'd appreciate it. Don't talk about Bruno. Again, I don't know. Schooled in 2-5, made a break. Sylvain went with him in the qual- in the schooler, said he only made a break because the horse got really tight to him and he had to check him and he made a break. Okay. Let's see how he looks qualifying. I have no idea. And then we come to Great Bet and Jay Port Beach Boy. Great bet is greatest endings, brother, who I hold in very high regard. We'll talk about him briefly in a second. And J. Port Beach Boy, Century Pharaoh's brother. Two horses with very famous brothers. I have famous brothers, too. <laughs> I do. But when it comes to uh, racing, great bet, qualifier very flat, his first start. Second qualifier was good. Very good. 55-3, and three, finished third, fall of speed. Last night, uh, I can tell you what happened. He might have shown 1.5 uh, out of 5 for blood. But I'm going to say that was born from shutting his air off. He shut his air off because he was a little rude in the hole and climbed up on top of the horse in front of him to the point where James had to relent, had to give up and move him. Now he's fourth. 
you could see what James was doing. James was trying to drop Martin Lachance's horse in in front of him in the first turn so he could follow him. Instead, Martin Lachance said, no, I'm good, and just kept going to the front. Now he's got the favorite on the front. He's 9-2. to two. He's got a long shot in front of him that he let in front of him, and there's nothing he can do about it now. Hands are already, hands dealt. you got to play the hand you're dealt. Now the wrinkle of him being a little rude. You can see that James finally said, all right, just pace up on top of the horse in front of him. He didn't want to do that. He wanted to get right in the bike with the horse. Just be rude. He was just being rude last night. And every time James would pull harder on him, the horse again would creep closer to shutting his air off. And at some point, he passed the line. He started to shut his air off. Then he panicked. And he was going to get in the bike with the horse in front of him. So James moves him to the outside. He's breathing good. Have you ever been close to being choked out? Yeah. It doesn't work that way. It isn't a light switch that goes back on. The damage is already done. James rushes towards the leader. Even if Martin Lachance had let him go, he still would have been beat 500 lengths. The damage was already done. He shut his air off a little bit. He'd already started to bleed, and the remnants of that was well seen coming out of the last turn. How do we fix that? We have earplugs on the horse. I would say put a snake cord on him. That would be my choice. But again, that'll be up to Dominic and James. Try not to put him in that position again. Easier said than done. Mm-hmm. And move forward with the horse. And uh, J-Port Beach Boy, I am in the same boat as you. I can only go on the information I got. Johnny was a little surprised he raced that bad last night too. I could read into that. Dominic swears he's a better horse than that. And James has only seen him one time, which is one time more than me. And didn't like what he saw. So, on the left line, not steering good. Let's fix that. Get the horse in a position to do well. And then we move to Missouri with him next week. The show me state. I need you to show me if you're any good or not. And we'll know, we'll have a better idea next week. So for all my partners on J-Port Beach Boy saying, Anthony, what are we going to do here? We've scoped him. We're going to draw his blood. Uh, we're going to make sure we un we flip over every stone between now and his next qualifier. So he has also no excuses when he goes behind the gate next week. I, I am going to finish off uh, this long-winded video. Right? You did a lot of talking. I really I've wish you'd shut up half the time. I'm trying to figure out why you made me I, I here, really wish that you would just tone it down sometimes. You're really just a chatterbox. Okay. Well, so you're when not we really look engaging at, me in conversation. Well, I tried to. I'm looking at you. I'm talking to you about the horses. You just <laughs> didn't seem to say anything about it. What is your take on those horses? Any of them. Never mind. What's your take on uh, time is on my side? Because you, you, we don't talk about him very much. What's your take on him? You saw him today. How do you look? I, he is, he's impressing me. For sure. Look good. You were shocked at the Captain Crunch. I don't have yeah. a Captain Crunch as a B. I think, sure, if you're if you are Nancy or Scott or somebody that is has a vested interest in right. Captain Crunch, you're going to be like, no, the Captain Crunches are great. No, yeah. they weren't. They were terrible last year. Yeah. One won the Breeders' Crown, and everybody else kind of was disappointed. Yeah. But that happens. If and I remember uh, Steve Jones telling me about this. Said Better's Delight was terrible. First crop Better's Delight was horrible. He said, in fact, it was fantastic because Steve. I Steve Jones had bought a ton of the shares of Better's Delight and short of uh, Apple or IBM stocks, you know, Better's Delight just punched the cash register every year and a guy like Steve just cleaned up. So good for him. Um, and don't judge the, the horses on one crop. So hard not to. It, I was just going like to say Everyone that. did that tactical landing. Everyone is doing it with Green Shoe. It goes the other way too. We can name some horses that really were bad <laughs> right after their first crop. No, I'm crop. talking about... Yeah. Well, six pack. But, um, yeah, yeah, that was that, first crop. I'm just that saying that it's easy to... It is. It's easy because it's in front of you. Yeah. You can't tell me not to judge a horse when I can. The green shoes, we had four of them. I, I loved the ones we had at two, but I had to say it quietly because so many people were disappointed. And I think it was just expectations. Insider yes. trading was nice. Pull the shoes is going to win a maiden claimer next week. And somebody's like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Why not? I'm going to put her in where she can win. She is not competitive in that stake race. She's not competitive in the class she's in. But there's classes where she is going to be super competitive. Find those classes. Just show me horses that can win races, and those are the horses that will make me happy. Pull the Shoes owes us virtually nothing except for some bills and stake races. We gave nothing for her. We gave like 22000 for her. She's made thirty-eight, by the way, yeah. on her lines. She's going to be a, a useful horse for us. Green Tea has talent, very green, but he's going to have to get his act together in, in Kentucky. Very nice horse. And I know we talked about Flashfly being rude the last little while, but that hasn't been her. I'm not going right. to judge her on two weeks misbehaving when she has a year and a half of not I misbehaving know, in, behind her. I'm not thing. doing it. Bad I thought thing. she trained good. She is going to qualify good and we'll be fine. Who's the one I'm missing? There's another three-year-old. Green Tea, Insider Trading, Pull the Shoes. Oh, no, the other one's the two-year-old. Green Glitter. Broke my heart not to put that filly in my top ten list I'm today. I'm surprised. Uh, I just, I picked... 
she sits at the bar first. Only well, because, because that she has more manners. She has deeper pedigree. She's got the green glitter has never done anything wrong with me. Wow. Okay, what about when Did you really just make that? What face? about what? when she dr- dumped you out of the job cart? It wasn't her fault. She was oh. scared of a tractor, scared of a tractor, and went over two rough parts in the jo- in the job cart, dumped me out, scraped my elbow up. But at no point did I blame her for that. I can't blame her for being scared of a tractor in December of her two year old year any more than I can be mad at a horse for jumping over a shadow. I can't be mad because you jumped over something any more than I can be mad at. I'm, I, I know I'm just gonna be mad. I almost said Irish Ray for being a bad horse. It's just not a good horse. You can't be mad at a horse for being slow or being scared of something. It's not their fault. Green Glitter is a very, very nice filly. My concern with Green Glitter, and I'll tell you who ruined it for me, and Steve hates when I see this Enzo's name, but it is Enzo. Because Enzo, we had staked to the Breeders' Crown. We thought this horse was a killer. He does everything right because he did everything right. He just, God did not give him a big enough gas tank or a fast enough body to do what I thought he should and could be able to do. She doesn't do everything right. Everything right. You can. I won the set on the front with her, first over, from last, in a hole. She can do everything right. She understands the game. She understands her job, and she does it well. My only question in my head, because of Enzo, can she do it enough? And, I, and you might say, well, they, they aren't related. One's a green shoe, and one's by the father of green shoe. Mm-hmm. There is some, some parallel lines. So I am a little saying, oh, green shoe is, is, I know that green glitter is going to be a nice filly, but I'm worried she might let me down if I, if I pump her tires too much. If I tell yeah. everybody she just, this is a killer, she's the best filly in the world, and then she goes out and she's just a nice filly, I want to be sitting in a position where I'm okay with her winning a stallion series in July. Mm-hmm. And that is why I didn't put her on there. Right? I don't know. She does everything right. Can she do enough? So, um, Mounds, you forgot about him, but considering that you loved his sister so much, what do you think of, of Mounds? Because he does nothing wrong, by no, the way. Doesn't. The break the other day was not his fault, and he recovered from it. How many nominers of one a- or two horses can make a break at the half, at the five-eighths on a half-mile track, recover and still win the race? Yeah. A layover. And That's who can do he's it. he's a big colt, though. It's big a colt. track for a big colt. It would not shock me. And I'll say this because I've sat behind him three times in a racing situation, won all three. It would not shock me if he took a mark of 53 as a three-year-old in Indiana. That would not surprise me in the least. They seem to come on at three, that family. He, yes. Tactical mounds. You know, everybody says, oh, she's such a nice filly. We didn't know she was that kind of filly. No. We just thought she was a nice horse. And I keep telling everybody the difference between a really nice horse and a nice horse is very little. A good trip, a healthy day, right? Uh, having a good week of training, getting a good drive. These are all the major factors, the difference between being sixth and first. Mm-hmm. Who's your, what do you think? Of, did you see Memory Train down yet? Not good. Like I, they, no. I didn't talk about pickpocket a little bit too, and I was pleased. He's trained down okay, but this is the only horse we paid into the Hamiltonian this year, was pickpocket. And I'm not telling you he's on that path yet. But he went a hell of a mile in a school. Chased down Pacers, was second or third, beat a half a length, 57 and a piece. His last half was 55 and a piece. And he was very good. I am super eager to see this horse qualify on Tuesday. I want to check the weather because I hope it's sunny like it was the other day. We got a lot of power going on Tuesday, whether it be training and driving. Now, I am going to finish off with the rage horses because they've been racing good. You know, somebody said, well, you get rid of those horses. I really think you chopped away at some of the foundation of the stable. You might have been one of them. But when I look at what we have, right, now I'm just going to put things in perspective. The horses we sold have done okay, right? Tiger did win that bottom class or second from the bottom class and then got beat out of the nine hole. We'll give him okay, the uh, benefit of the doubt. No, he had no, the nine that's hole. fine. That's fine. That's fine. But you took all our lookers away from Ontario. And I think at the end of the day, well, I had to. I had to. I told everybody I was not going to continue to race Locatelli and White Tiger against one another. And then you throw into the mix, and I said this to Harry, I made it very simple. Then you throw Looks Like Money, who, for the most part, is our best horse. And at the very least, our second best horse, only because one horse is a killer right now. But truthfully speaking, one's racing in Ohio, one's racing at Mohawk. Looks Like Money is likely our best horse. So I made it simple to Harry. Who do you want to keep, Locatelli or Looks Like Money? He said, Anthony, there's no comparison. Then you just answered your own question. You see it this week. Is it fair that Yo Mister gets to race against Look Like Looks Like Money? No, but the other class didn't fill. Now I don't mind because Looks Like Money can beat up on the class below the open. 
White Tiger could do in the 24 class. If he caught the right bunch, he'd win. Locatelli should win. He was a little bit better than White Tiger, but not as handy. They were good horses. My take, my take overall, and Harry disagreed with me. I think Yol Mister is better than both of them. I do. Tiger was fast, but you knew he was a coward. But he always seemed to do good. Locatelli couldn't leave the gate good, but Greek and James always had him in a good place to do well in those classes. I think Yo Mister can leave quicker. He is durable. He's a year younger than one, two or three years younger than the other, and I think he's a brighter spot. So we have Yo Mister, who I don't mind for now. We're not going to race him all year long against Lo against uh, looks like money either. By the way, that's not going to happen. But I'll allow it for now and see how they play out. Looks like money. Right, or uh, Locatelli and White Tiger, there just wasn't a spot. Given that argument, given that scenario, there wasn't a spot. And when we got offered the money we did for the bar pair of them, it was we got more than enough for Locatelli, especially considering what we got for White Tiger, which I thought was more than fair at the time. And then Resolute Bay, there's not a spot for that type of horse there. He's going to race good for a couple of starts and get eviscerated after that. It wasn't fair to him. But those horses didn't go and light the world on fire, right? Yeah. Look at the horses we kept. For the people thinking we chopped away our foundation. J.K. Victory's about to qualify. Jason trained him today. He said he trained amazing in Northfield. I, I don't know if he's angling to keep him there, but he's probably going to go to Indiana, right? Patrick the Piranha, who's done well his entire life for us. What's wrong, honey? Patrick the Piranha has been amazing from day one. Every time I think maybe he's just a little old, maybe, maybe he's that white tiger type. Maybe he's just, let's, while we're still on that peak bubble, let's move him. And then he won't race to the monster again. He's just a nice horse, and he has a spot at the Meadows. Right? Greatest ending. has been a bust since we got him. Made a little bit of money back, but we're hemorrhaging revenue with greatest ending. But I think he's creeping towards a place where he could be a monster. He is a fast horse. And I think if we could get him on a roll for a couple of months, and even maybe get him down to the Meadowlands at the end of the summer, I think he would be a killer down there. But a lot goes on. First off, he's got to put some races together. One okay race followed up where he bled and finished eighth is certainly not the path we want to be on. Today will be an interesting tell. I'm very interested to see that. Right? Then you look on the trotting side. Looks like money. Absolute player in the free-for-all here, I believe. No one can contest that or believe that I'm false. In saying that, I'm wrong. I'm not. The horse is going to be a killer. If he stays sound, stays put together, Harry's done a great job managing him. James will manage him. You know that. And I think he's going to be a killer. Yo, mister. The only fringe horse we have, and I think he's in a good spot right now. Am I going to condone racing him in the open every week against Looks Like Money? Absolutely not. But if he can float down, he can win the 28,000 class. He can win the 32,000 class. He can't win the 36. He can't win the free-for-all, I don't think. But he can win the other ones. So there's a horse that just, he's a float. He's a floater, but a good one. Kings County, again, hasn't found his best stride. I thought we were on the cusp of it. And then he, too, bled a little bit and was off a little bit. Dr. Roberts, Andy Roberts in Kentucky is working on him. Uh, drew the nine hole, and really that trailing position was the reason that I opted to go to Pennsylvania on Tuesday, which helped me because it was a tough spot for me to be in. But I think it's the right way to go. And then uh, Tech Song Soprano. Don't talk about this horse near enough. Third in the open. Hey, Spitfire overseas in this horse. The last two on my list, these horses haven't stopped. They raced all the way through their three-year-old season, never stopped, right into their four-year-old season. It is almost May, and these one horse just won the open out of the seven hole, and the other one was third on a half-mile track in the open at Yonkers. Two war horses that have extremely bright futures. That is what we have in the barn. So well, for the people, I got a break because he. Well, he, he ate fib, but yeah, yeah that, not really a vacation. No, it's like I saying oh, I got shot in an armed robbery, no, but I'm going to go not, sit in a beach I'm in Ma saying, Mexico. You, you, it's not really the same. I get that. Didn't race from May to July. Yeah, but then went right into the final of Pennsylvania's yeah. next time out. So when you look at those horses, right, they're not supposed to be able to do that. But they have. Somebody said the other day, well, are we going to rest Spitfire? That's going to be up to Spitfire. Are you asking me if I'm going to rest the horse? I'm going to rest the horse that just won the open out of the seven hole going for $34,000. My answer, first inclination would be absolutely not. Let's see how he does for the next little while. Let's see how he transitions. At some point, I think the heat is going to be the killer for Spitfire. So when he starts to get a little more lathered up on them, we like to see maybe he races flat a couple of times. I'm going to say, okay, I suspect he'll probably have June and July off, August and the first part of September to train back, and then away we go again. Uh, and likely the same for for uh, Tech Song Soprano. 
grossly undervalued in our barn. The horse has been amazing, has been very good. Scotty's done a great job. Megan's done a great job. And I'm so excited to look forward. You know, we talked about Rosetta, right? We talked about all the horses that are going to move around this summer and how exciting it is. And I want everybody to look at maybe the changes we made over the last few months weren't the worst that you thought. You're not always going to be, you know, thought highly of when you sell horses like that. I know that you were a little upset at me a little bit there, but uh, was I wrong? Looking at the way the races are going at Mohawk now. I'm not really paying attention anymore. Yes, you are. You just I'm don't not. want to answer properly. No, I'm not. Was I wrong? What In what regard? Resolute Bay, White Tiger, and Locatelli. Was you, were you wrong to sell them for what you were offered? Yes. No. They, I can't believe you emphatically just went with no. She loves me. Anyway, uh, a happy birthday to my beautiful wife. I couldn't do any of this without her, and you guys know that. Um, and for those of you who don't, my wife plays in a, a huge role. Someone asked me, they're like, oh, you work in the barn? Yeah, <laughs> work in the barn. That's yeah. my favorite. Amy plays in a, a, an unbelievable role every single day. Uh, and life's funny, you know, I, even me. I, I, I live on chaos, and I'm everywhere all the time. But couldn't be anywhere any of the time if it wasn't for her. And uh, the biggest reason that we are right now trying to do things a little differently with us staying more time in Ohio is only possible because of Amy also. So you guys know that. I'm not just saying it because it's her birthday. I try to say it to her all the time. But... It is worth documenting. So, uh, once again, happy birthday. We have a uh, dinner uh, yes. in an hour and a half, so you need to have a bath and get ready to go. Yep. And uh, I'm also going to finish up my videos real quick. You guys got a long video from us for the two-year-olds, a long opening video. I'm going to run through the racehorses and the three-year-olds and the two-year-olds really quick. And then I, too, will get ready for supper tonight. So I want you guys to have, I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. And uh, hopefully it's warmer wherever you are. It's cold here. It's still only 6 degrees. It's 4 o'clock in the I afternoon. Know. It's nasty. I will talk to you all very soon. Have a wonderful weekend wherever you are. Take care and good luck at the races.